let's move on to fisheries because um, um, Gary Simpson probably knows more about fish than anybody else in this country, especially South Africa's fish. Just a thought, Nima. That's what I've been doing for the last 30 years of my life. At first I, I wanted to become a millionaire and I decided well fishing is the way I was going to do it and I went and became a multi-millionaire and hell of a thing. Um, realized that wasn't what I really wanted and then felt bad about what I actually did to achieve that. Um, and my, my, my thing is not just about looking after resources, it's also about having been born here in Cork Bay and hanging out with the fishing communities and growing up like that and seeing the pain and suffering in those homes and wanting to do something to make it better. So, the, so I come from coastal communities to make their lives better and I come from wanting to use what we have sustainably and enjoy life after that. Damn hard task. Before industrialization came along everyone went and did their thing and it was sustainable and you couldn't really wipe it out because it is a mighty potent resource no matter how hard they've given it a go somehow we still have some. And in Capitalism came into that industrialization, but just an example is in Falchrift, which is a little west coast town in 19, call it in the 40s. They found out that they could um, extract oil from, from poultrids, and they had this little one ton an hour silex plant, and it all started off small. And eventually they had the 10 ton reduction, 10 ton an hour reduction plant, and the 60 ton an hour reduction plant, and then expanding the fishing fleet and starting to suck in, in all this fish. Uh, talking about the communities that fished, they were making so much money that their wives were getting clothes and cars and things imported from the rest of the world in the 40s. The fishermen, the very fishermen themselves, not just the capitalists. And, geez, that looks like a damn good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then capitalism stepped in, seriously, and, and the, the money men realized we can make a lot of money here and we just suppress the workers, we provide the machinery, and we've got to put a regulation mechanism in with government. And, for instance, the lobsters, there was a free-for-all, but all of a sudden, I think it was about 1940, just before the apartheid government came in, still the colonials, they did the thing called the production quota, where it didn't matter what you caught, but only so much could be produced each year and exported out the country, and there could only be so many producers. So, th and that's how they started to lock down. And we'll get to West Coast Rock Lobster, which is really a problem now. And these coastal community guys slowly had their, their normal rights taken away from them, and they couldn't exercise them unless they worked for the factory or for the capitalist. So, our first collapse of a fishery was back in on the west coast in 1949 and it was well, what happened was that they just obliterated the resource already then they brought in the technologies that were too effective and they wiped it out so they wiped out but I, I'm not a scientist but the reproductive biomass of the stock and it's never ever since recovered to any level as good as it was then then they walked away from it because they, they, it, it wasn't making money. But there were other fisheries, you know, let's go have a look at the hack. And just this lobster's really cooking now. So let's wipe that out. Same as Cannery Road. It's the, precisely the Cannery Road, um, California situation. So these guys just, it's the same companies. Oceana is, I think, 97 years old now. They were there, old Gaggins and the boys. It's fascinating history when you haven't been there, but I almost feel like I lived there in a, in a previous time set. Um, and these very same, and you, <laughs> the families and the Rothschilds were there. They funded the Marine Products' first facility in those years. And these big capital families moved in here and took control of things, and nothing has changed to date. Okay. So, so just know that was that what you got today, you got INJ, you've got um, Oceana. Oceana is the biggest, and now turning 4.3 billion rand a year. That was the last turnover, just now now. Um, followed then after that INJ about two two and a half billion, and then you've got um, I would say Sea Harvest, 
which is also in the two to two and a half the hake, particularly hake and iron jays, particularly the hake fishery. And then you've got old Gaston and the, the Lusitania brothers and the Portuguese community in South Africa. And then you've got um, pioneer fishing. They probably the most responsible for the decimation of our fish stocks are going to that. And Viking fishing and marine products. These are the boys. And today I've been part of making that new allocation system and it's beautiful on paper but the application is never what was said on the paper and what should filter through into the system and it's contrived and manipulated. Yeah, and this brings me now to today. So, for instance, in the Hague, which is our biggest fishery, um, or our, big, our, our big, most wealthy fishery, our biggest fishery is the poultures and the anchovies. But the Hague fishery probably employs about 15,000 people a year, um, and it's really ruled by sea harvest, iron jay, and oceanas growing in it, and Viking fishing, and Gaston. Or let me put it this way. Sea harvest got about 40,000 ton a year, iron jay's got about 40,000 ton a year, and then with this empowerment thing, Lusitania, Viking, all these guys, they got between eight and 12,000 ton a year through fronted rights out to black people and then they catch it for them. And in the market, when you go across there, you'll find the cheapest, the, the, they take to make a fish finger, the bits and pieces, that's your lowest grade of hack. And when you go across into Europe and you go to the supermarket and you buy yourself a box of fish fingers, you're going to be paying the equivalent of 120 rand a kilo. So, <clears throat> not much of that money ever seems to get back here. And the empowerment guy, he comes along and they give him a thousand ton hack quota. Ideally, to be in that game, you need two and a half thousand tons to have your, your fish, in the, your loaf of bread in the shop each day so the customers come and you can keep turnover. So nobody gets two and a half thousand tons, but they give out a lot of little thousand tonners. So then the capitalists actually sit in a room, they hate one another, but they agree on one thing that we sure are not paying these guys anything more than three rand a kilo. Despite the fact that the lowest grade is going for 120 rand a kilo. That doesn't, but I mean... It so it's all contrived and controlled. And then to... So I deal with value chains, which... So, sorry, you haven't carried out, finished that statement. Maybe it'll be a took your again. It did. Contrived and controlled. So you say they all sit in a room? Oh yes, and so they, they, you know the competition commission says you can't do X, Y, Z. So, and they do all hate one another. I know Gaston and I know Nico and I know all these guys and I've been with them on the tours when I was a capitalist. I, I know the beat. But I see them fighting with one another and they hate one another. But money is more important. So they will go and have a boss parade and declare certain levels. And so yes, we and all the big what? companies of what we're going to pay the new quota holders. So we will sit here, we own all the big companies, and so we, we're not going to pay more than three rand. So Gaston, we know you like climbing out the box because you're so damn greedy, but if you do, we're all coming for you. And it's a gentleman's agreement and they walk away, and then empowerment remains down there and the whole lot. And the transition doesn't happen where... So only big is great. You have to have a big company to be successful, but meanwhile, you could have... What I was trying to build in this London area a two and a half thousand ton hay company that employs people that was paying 10% of the turnover and really I, w I started making all this money and I felt rather guilty what the hell am I doing with all this money it's all too easy so how do I give it back into the system and that's why they didn't like me so it's contrived and controlled the market he's done all yeah, this is the yeah. market right 